What's going on YouTube? This is Tyler back again with another video and today I'm going to be showing you guys all the different orders that I have at PSA, BGS, SGC, and CSG. Sorry HGA, I've not gotten around to sending anything to you because you don't accept a lot of cards and I submit a lot of things. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Um, I do want to say the purpose of this video isn't to show the amount of money that I've made and how much I've reinvested back into the collection. It's really just to give you guys a, pers a perspective of how leveraged I am or over leveraged so that whenever I'm speaking about the sports card market and if it's going up and down, I you know exactly where I'm coming from because I have a lot of money sitting in Greeter's hands right now. A lot of money. And we're going to go through that exactly through going through all of my different spreadsheets that I have. So uh, pulling up my um, spreadsheets that I have for every single order, for those of you who haven't seen, um, I do l document all of this information into an individual spreadsheet so that I can track how much I'm making for every single purchase. Um, but outside of that, I also have a cumulative spreadsheet that tracks everything. So all the orders, that way I can break it down by year, I can break it down by um, really any filter that I really want. So I'm going to open that up right now and I've just breaking out things that are currently getting graded. I broke everything out into a separate tab and we're going to go through that right now. I actually want to start um, at the bottom because I have everything arranged in order of date. So um, this is going to be very, very dry because I'm not going to show you guys the cards. I'm basically showing you guys the financial analysis, so to speak, uh, and also just what cards I actually have that are getting graded. So without further ado, we're going to jump into it. If this is dry stuff to you guys, feel free to click out of the video, but I think this is going to be pretty, pretty, um, uh, I guess, enlightening for some people. I will share with you in the beginning the amount of money that I have right now um, sitting at PSA, Beckett, SGC, and CSG. So I'm gonna give you the totals of how much I've actually spent on the cards. So you can see I have different columns here. So the way that I set up, set up my columns, I have the line item, and this is basically mimics what PSA does whenever you get your grades back from PSA. Line item, quantity, serial number, grade, card, cost, um, Grading, which is really the grading fee, sale, which is how much I sold, and expected, which is basically what I expect the card to sell for. So if uh, there's if a value is filled out in the expected column, that's basically a receivables. If it is filled out in the sale column, that means I've sold that card and that is the sale after fees. I do not log any of the fees. Again, I do all this stuff through consignment, so I just log the number of what the card sold for after fees because I'm not paying the fees. Um, um, uh, it's already being deducted out. So, throughout everything, everything that I have sitting at PSA, um, SGC, CSG, and Beckett, here are the numbers, guys. At the very, very bottom here, uh, we can take a look at this. So, cost of goods sold, in terms of what I actually paid for the cards, we have $209,000. And this is dating back to, I think, that my oldest order um, at PSA right now, and really across any, any um, company, was arrived uh, in November and logged in November. Um, so I have several bulks at PSA. I have one order remaining at Beckett. Uh, I have one order that I'm getting ready to submit to SGC. Um, I have, I've received a couple back from SGC, so it doesn't include those that I'm actually getting ready to sell for consignment. Um, and I have two at CSG. Uh, so that is the breakdown. I can't remember how many I have at PSA. I guess we can go through this. Uh, and then receivables. This is how much I expect. Now, whether or not I actually get this number, um, historically, I've gotten this number and then some. So I have really conservative estimates for my receivables. And really one of the things I wanna to talk to you guys about is whenever I'm going through this, um, the market has fluctuated greatly over the past couple of months. As you all know, you can see one of my last videos where I talked about the sports market crash. Now, a lot of people talking about, well, it's not really good to talk about a crash. Um, I mean, the market is, is, call it a crash or call it a downturn. Crash is something that uh, is probably a little bit more um, in your face, so to speak. But the market is turning down. However, one of the things I do want to highlight is that a lot of the things that I bought, they're really not going down as much as some of those big um, high pop uh, glamorous cards. So 
and there will be value for you guys if you stick around and watch through this because you'll see everything that I've bought basically from October all the way to present day. And you'll be able to see, you know, has these, have these values really fluctuated? So I've updated these spreadsheets a little bit as time has gone on because I'm constantly monitoring. Is my valuation of all this crashing? Because I certainly don't want that to happen. You know, right now as it stands, I'm going to profit around $120,000 on all this, assuming the values stay where they are. Um, I don't really have a lot of confidence in that whenever it comes to CSG or SGC, and in some instances, PSA. But without further ado, let's just jump into these things. Um, so as you can see, this is my order that I sent off uh, in November. As of today, this is in the grading stage at PSA. So this is an old modern, not an ultra modern uh, order. Um, you can see all the different types of cards that I'm buying. I'm not going to go through every single one. You guys can take a look at this if you want. I will try to blow this up. I'm actually going to scoot this over and then I will blow this up in the final video so that you can actually see what cards are what. But I'm buying a lot of LeBron cards, second years, um, Anthony Davis. So this is a, a really a post-bubble type of order where I got a lot of Anthony Davis rookies in this order, some Mike Trout early prisms. Um, Kobe Bryant finest base cards, really anything shiny. Kobe Bryant was doing really, really well. Kawhi Leonard rookies, some of the lower end rookies, not, not really prisms. You can see I'm in really, really uh, at a high price for some of these. Um, now the good thing is, is the PSA values are still holding strong, assuming that I actually get some PSA tens. Now in some of these orders, you actually see some of the grade assignment here. The cards are not graded guys. This is kind of what I'm thinking of what the grades are going to project as whenever I was looking through these. So if it's blank, I just didn't put a projection in there, maybe because I didn't forget it or it was a late edition, whatever. Uh, as you can see, a lot of these don't have grades. This is just my projection of what I think the card is gonna grade that way I can put an, an appropriate valuation uh, next to it. Now I still, even if I think a card is gonna be PSA 10, I don't put a really, really high valuation like this Mike Trout, 2011 Bowman's Best Rookie, a PSA 10 is not worth 200. It's worth well, well, well more than that. It's, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars um, But I'm, so I try to build these models very, very conservatively so that whenever I get the cards back, I'm usually surprised in terms of his valuation as opposed to, you know, it being a Debbie Downer. So PSA, usually I'm pretty well um, ahead of where I project myself to be. Um, so you can see more Anthony Davis. These uh, Kobe Bryant blue te uh, top team finest um, inserts. Those are numbered to like 1500, I believe. Uh, pristine, Tops Pristine is an unbelievable brand to buy and grade. Love that set, very under the radar. Uh, more, uh, you saw the Mike Trouts, uh, Anthony Davis's, Russell Wilson. So a lot of Russell Wilson rookies. This is whenever Russell Wilson was starting to get hot and he had some MVP uh, talks going on early in the year. Uh, SP Authentic, Score Gold Zone, um, Jamal Murray rookies, those have kind of like taken a bath because that was like post a bubble. Clay Thompson rookies. And then I go into a breakdown of, or at least some cards where I spent around $4,000 on all of these cards, starting with this Steph Curry and down. So I spent $4,000 on every single one of these. Giannis rookies, Kevin Durant tops rookies, Kevin Durant, you know, SP rookie editions, all kinds of different cards. Um, so a lot of really, really, really cool cards. But uh, yeah, so that's the first order. And overall, I think I'm going to do really, really, really well. <clears throat> the next order that I did is an ultra modern that I sent off at the exact same time. So this is a, a order that was sent off in November and it uh, got logged. I want to say, I can't honestly remember, December or February. So this is the orders that actually get hurt the most because these are ultra modern orders, right? Ultra modern is not doing well today. Now, if you do, if you pick the right players, you can still hedge your bets a little bit. Um, the older modern cards are doing much, much better than ultra modern. However, a lot of my ultra moderns, I think that I picked the right players where even if I do well on a grading perspective, I'm still going to get the valuation that I want. So uh, you can see Louis Ribera rookies, those probably aren't going to do so hot. But Patrick Mahomes, these are like very cheap Patrick Mahomes. So second year Phoenix, first year Sage, like literally Sage rookies. You know, so I have valuations of $60 in, uh, each for those. But if I get PSA 10s, I'm going to do way, way, way better than, than that. Um, second year contenders, um, Jason Tatum, prestige rookies. 
uh, a lot of Trey Young um, Chronicles rookies uh, from a, a variety of different brands. Zion, um, Revolution Shockwaves, uh, a couple of Joe Burrows, which probably may not do what I wanted. Um, never would have thought those would ta have taken so long. All those bowl bowls that you all saw, yeah, they're in here. Unfortunately, that's contributing to the backlog. I wish I could just like burn those. <laughs> um, didn't do so hot on those. Um, uh, some more Patrick Mahomes Phoenix, uh, some high-end uh, inserts from Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady, more of these cheap Patrick Mahomes cards. I, I told you guys back then these were a great buy because you can basically get these in $15, $20 a card, as you can see, and then get them graded. If they're PSA 10s, they're over $100. That, it's just, they're going to be um, cards that you can make money on. Um, some optic rookies of uh, Jason Tatum, some second year, and rookies of uh, Luca. More Luca rookies, which Luca rookies right now are doing really, really well as he's playing very well in the playoffs. Um, and ba basically, that's exactly how that entire order is. Um, a lot of Patrick Mahomes, man, I have a ton of these. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, a lot of uh, Luca rookies um, across a variety of different brands, some second year Luca, some Zion. Uh, some of these are the Chronicles. So like the Phoenix red, uh, there's a silver in here, which I think is like a Crusades, um, a Kobe select, uh, courtside, John Morant. I have a ton of John Morant, which I'm probably not going to do so hot on these, but still, I think that I'm going to end up doing so pretty well in the order. His value actually did pick up a little bit because of how he played in the playoffs. Um, some Topps Chrome Update Juan Sotos. These actually did really, really well in the spring. The values are starting to come a little bit back down because he had a slow start, but he's actually picking it back up now. Um, a lot of Juan Soto rookies. A couple of autographs from Leaf, um, Heritage rookies, Prism rookies, and then a ton of Fernando Tatis. So this Ultra Modern Order is going to do very well because I think that I picked the right players who are doing really well. I mean, look at these Fernando Tatises. Phoenix, uh, Contenders, Bowman Chrome Mega Box, Bowman's Best Orange Refractor Rookie, Topps Chrome Update Pink Refractors. I mean, these PSA 10s are not 200, and these are easy grades. Now, if PSA just clobbers me, not going to do well. But these are easy grades. Um, I'm assuming that I'm going to do pretty well on these. I mean, all these Topps Chrome updates, you know, I'm hopefully going to be able to get the valuation that I really want. Um, finest rookies, Bowman Chrome rookies, I have a blue refractor, a refractor, um, Topps Heritage Miners, Topps uh, Heritage Purple refractor, Bowman Sterling, a Bowman Sterling refractor. Ton of, I can't believe how big this order is now, I think about it. Um, and then some more Jason Tatum. So these Jason Tatums may actually start sliding a little bit. I have valuations of PSA 10s around 125. I don't think I'm going to get a full 125 out of those. Whenever I put these numbers in, I think these were closer to 200. So I put that number in just to bake in some PSA 9s because I know I'm going to get that. So these numbers are not going to be a, a perfectly accurate, but again, it's really going to depend on what the PSA 10, PSA 9 ratio is, um, depending on what the card looks like. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what this first order looks like. You can see some big cards sprinkled in here, like a finest Erling Holland rookie, Bowman Sterling, J uh, Jason Dominguez, auto refractor. I do have some Deshaun Watsons, no bueno. Um, a bunch of Revolution Trey Young. So yeah, this is an order that's going to do really, really, really well, in my opinion. Um, if we keep going up. So the next order that I submitted, it was about around the same time frame. This is right around Christmas. So this is a, uh, a another ultra modern order. So more of those Leafs, uh, Patrick Mahomes, Donruss, uh, Optic, Rookies and Jerseys of Patrick Mahomes, uh, just more Patrick Mahomes. I don't think you can go wrong with Patty, right? You cannot go wrong with Patrick Mahomes. He has been one of the safest plays throughout this entire bubble um, with some of his cards actually increasing. Um, but again, it really depends on what your PSA 10 rates are. Uh, these are going to do perfectly fine. These cards have not crashed at all, at all. Um, then we start getting into some second year Patrick Mahomes, some selects, uh, third year, the, like an optic orange, that prestige heroes insert, um, then more Luca. So even more Luca in here with uh, a couple of rookies and then more John Morant's. Then we get into more Fernando Tatis Jr.'s, which I think that he was a solid, solid bet going into the season based on how he played last year. And that seems like it's paying off so long as he can stay healthy. Um, yep, some more Fernando Tatis. Uh, three more Erling Holland finest. I really hope that one of these hits Jim Mint because that's going to make my day. 
Jadon Sanchez, his uh, valuation has dropped quite a bit, so those probably aren't going to be big cards. But then we get start getting into some Josh Allen rookies, Joe Burrow, Donner's Optic Preview rookies. Did have some Baron Lore in here. I'm probably not going to do so hot on those. Um, more Jason Tatum. I have a ton of Jason Tatum. As you all know, I'm really, really, really wanting Jason Tatum to do well because I have a lot of his cards. Um, now I'm starting to get a little bit bearish on, on him just because the East is so stacked. Uh, John Morant have a ton of optic uh, insert hollows. More Joe Burrow, uh, Donner's parallels. Those actually do really well in PSA grades. Um, more Patrick Mahomes. These probably aren't going to get graded that well. They were kind of chipped up and beat up, but at least getting them in a PSA holder is better than raw. Um, more Joe Burrow previews um, and then some Phoenix inserts. So yeah, you get the drift. You get the drift. That's really kind of what this is looking like uh, in terms of um, actual inserts. Did I actually get a Luca bronze? Wow, I have a Luca bronze card. I can't even remember that <laughs> uh, from last year's Chronicle. So that's a pretty cool card. Um, man, it's been so long, I forget what some of these cards are. Now we get to the old modern that I sent off at the exact same time, again, around Christmas. So old modern, again, I predict that old modern is going to do much, much better. It's a lower pop. Uh, you know, PSA, uh, you know, 50% of the cards at PSA are ultra modern variety. So um, that's basically new, newer cards. So I think the older cards are actually going to be um, pretty resistant to all this just because there's not a lot of them getting graded out there in this tsunami that's taking place. So first up, SP Authentic, uh, Kawhi Leonard uh, rookies, uh, some more Russell Wilsons, more Jamal Murrays, um, almost the exact same type of order that I had last time. A ton of Giannis SP Authentic rookies. These all look beautiful. If I don't get a really high percentage on these uh, PSA 10s, that's going to be really disappointing. And I'm going to know that something's up at PSA if that happens. Uh, Prism Travis Kelsey rookie. I have a bunch of those coming. You know, I wanted to squeeze one of these in, hoping that they would win the Super Bowl. Um, again, look at this valuation. So a PSA 10 of this right now is around a $300 card. You know, I thought this was pretty clean. So me putting a $100 valuation, I'm hedging myself against overestimating the value of, the, of what's getting sent out. Um, same thing with these Joel Embiid prisms. So 250 valuation, you know, might get one or two tens, uh, one or two nines, et cetera. Um, yeah, so you get the drift. Uh, a couple of LeBron rookies, Matrix rookie, and then also a comics, a Bazooka Comics rookie. Uh, then a Bowman Stern on Kevin Durant. So those actually in PSA 10 grade were getting close to around $1,000. So again, it really depends on what the PSA uh, 9 to 10 grade ratio is going to be. So next up... Uh, in January, I sent off a old modern, ton of finest Kobe Bryant second years, a ton of finest just base Kobe's, Bowman Chromes, Topps Chromes, a couple of refractors sprinkled in here really before the prices got crazy, and then a ton of selects. I got these for around $10 a card, so I had the, the regular concourse, and then I want to say that's the premier uh, card in here, so a ton of those, some finest Michael Jordans more Jason Tatum optics. I need to adjust this because these, these aren't going for that anymore. I probably need to knock that down to around 100. So that's going to shave off, you know, quite a bit of valuation. But again, depends on how everything grades. Uh, you know, that can be made up with a couple of other nice PSA 10s on some big cards, which is usually what happens. Um, some more Sage and Panini score Mahomes. You know, I've got a ton of these guys and I don't see like people like me flooding the market with Mahomes. I think there's always going to be a demand to absorb that. I really, really do. Um, and it wasn't really overprinted like some of the other stuff. Uh, getting into some more of the, um, Kevin Durant type cards. So second year Topps Chrome, Bowman Chrome, uh, then Fleer rookies, the 86 Fleer, and then the, the regular rookie, some finest Dirk Nowitzki rookies, um, another Bowman Sterling, um, uh, da, da, Kevin Durant, uh, some uh, LeBron James uh, base cards and inserts, and also Travis Kelsey, Topps rookies, Topps Chrome Refractors, Prism uh, rookies, rookies and stars. You know, I really think that some of these off the radar players where they have low pop uh, cards. You're just getting away from those high pop cards that I showed you that I have, but it's some of these guys where if you actually get a PSA 10, there's not a lot of them out there because not a lot of people grade these types of cards. So um, then also some uh, some select and prism early uh, silvers from some some superstars. So we're about halfway done with where we're uh, hoping to get. So next order, this is the ultra modern that was also sent off in January. So again, very same type of cards, guys. I'm not going to go through every single one of these. Um, Luca, Trey, 
Um, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, second and third year type stuff. Uh, some, a couple of Zions sprinkled in. Um, Steph Curry is now I'm getting into some football, and the football I'm probably going to take a bath on. Dude, football has not done very well, at least from last year's rookie class. And I'm going to do a separate video on that. It just really did not do what I wanted to do. This is one of the biggest orders right here. So this has about $75,000 in, well, uh, around $80,000 in expected value. Um, actual cost of goods sold is probably around fifty-five, sixty. This is a huge order. I was able to squeeze in a regular order right before the shutdown. This is a 134 card order. Um, that again, I'm paying a hundred dollars a card on for every single one of these. This is massive. I wasn't able to get a video up on this cause I wanted to get this stuff out the door. And uh, also my quality of the camera was terrible, but you can see what I sent in this. This is the biggest order. And I really hope that I do well on this because if I get slaughtered, I'm going to get slaughtered. It's not going to be good. Um, Patrick Mahomes, ton of rookies, um, Travis Kelsey, autograph rookies, three of them. Um, let's see what else. Some obsidian color blast, Patrick Mahomes. You can see I'm going to take a bath on these already because I paid, you know, basically peak prices and I think they're around half that value now. So I started dabbling into some of these more expensive cards and that proved to not be a good strategy, especially buying in February whenever I bought a lot of the expensive cards. Um, it ended up not being a good purchase. So sticking to these lower end things, um, even these Kobe's like, if you can buy Kobe's now for around these prices um, and grade them, you can still do well. But a, a lot of the more expensive four-figure cards, not going to do as hot on. More Kobe refractors, silver prisms, um, refractors, Justin Herbert, extended uh, select extended rookies. So I have two more of those coming. Uh, two of um, rookie gold vinyl from Chronicles Optic Auto. That, that's a really sick card. Um, two Clay Thompson rookies. I feel like I'm spitting everywhere. <laughs> uh, three more Bowman Sterling, Kevin Durant's, a ton of Kevin Durant stuff, like a second year refractor. Again, a, a second year refractor of that and a PSA nine is probably higher than 500. So a lot of these, I'm, again, I'm trying to buffer myself from any, any potential downturn. Ton of Joel Embiid prisms, uh, the variations, some die cut uh, parallels, more Fleer and 86 Fleer, Kevin Durant as well as some glossies thrown in, some Steph Curry rookies. Kobe UD3 rookies, uh, Justin Herbert uh, parallels, lots of that type of stuff. So that, that's all that's going to PSA in that order. Huge, huge order. <clears throat> this is the four card Super Express that I basically paid $1,200 PSA for and I ended up cracking everything out. So I logged this in a separate um, uh, um, file in terms of cost and then also the actual sale value of the cards, which I will do in a separate video. Um, so next up, this is going to the CSG stuff, and I, I don't have a lot of confidence in CSG. This is a 415 card order, and again, all this stuff was going to go to PSA, but I got everything prepped right before shutdown, um, and then the shutdown happened, and I was stuck with all these cards. So I was like, what do I do? And I can't go to SGC because they just raised their price to 75 Yes, it's back to 30 but these cards are not going to SGC for $30. I needed a cheap alternative. Um, so... It's all basically the same types of cards, but also some cards I really wish I had in PSA holders, like Jordan Walker, uh, Bowman Chrome Sapphire. Jordan Walker is killing it so far uh, in the minors. Zach Veen, not so much, but Jordan Walker is. Um, a ton of uh, more Jason Tatum rookies, a lot of John ja Morant. Court. It's not just uh, the same types of John ja Morant, so you actually have some Court Kings and some Revolutions in here. So hopefully those do pretty well. A lot of Zion, man. A lot of Zion. So the big key here is what types of valuations am I going to get on these? Because I have a lot of cards that are there and I'm not sure exactly how they're going to be received whenever they hit the market. Um, you all can see a lot of these um, Travis Kelsey SP Authentic rookies. These are cheap. I'm hoping that I can get them graded cheap and also do pretty well. Some second year, um, co or second year Patrick Mahomes, some Kobe Bryant stuff in here. Um, some Colin Sexton's I got in for around twenty-five dollars a card. You know, PSA tens whenever I bought them were around two hundred, two fifty. Those quickly crashed, and then all of a sudden PSA is no longer in business. So that basically rendered that purchase like obsolete and invalid. Um, Stefan Diggs refractors have seemed like they were doing pretty well, uh, and then even more. Look at these tops updates. Oh, I'm gonna send all these to freaking CSG. If I can only get them in PSA holders, then same with some of these Fernando Tatis rookies, some Bowman's best rookies for uh, Juan Soto, 
Jalen Hurts. I knew these were going to be low end. I was going to throw all these cheap football cards uh, CSG's way or whoever the cheapest grader was at the time. I didn't necessarily want to spend a very a, a whole lot of money on those. And then some more Deshaun Watsons. I think that's the last Deshaun Watsons that I have. Some older Prism rookies, some Jalen Brown rookies, which I'm probably going to take a bath on. So that's probably going to be the worst order. The CSG order is going to be the worst order, in my opinion. One, resale value of CSG is just not that great. Um, but also, I think that just sums it up. CSG resale is just not that great. <laughs> I think that's, that's pretty safe to say. Then the next order I had, I sent one right out because I was like, this is, it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. And I might as well try and get ahead of whatever backlog CSG is going to have, which is now approaching... 250, probably 300 days. They're, they're really slow to update this, and whenever they do update it, there's a huge jump in the waiting line. So uh, this order, Justin Herbert rookies, did not want to send all these there, but you know had to, gosh, I don't even want to look at this, man, because I can't even imagine what the resale on some of this stuff is, like some older Kobe stuff, Kevin Durant rookies. Uh... I guess these are some Topps Chrome Connor McGregor's. I think I typed that wrong. Yeah, those are Topps Chrome, not Topps. Um, Justin Herbert Optics. So all the Justin Herbert Optics stuff I sent to CSG. Um, Corey Seager, he was one of my per one of the guys I picked to have a good year this year. He's not having a good year. So sorry for all you guys who actually bought Corey Seager on my recommendation. He's not turning out to repeat what he did last year. Um, Juan Soto, Topps Update, uh, Chrome Pink. Dang, I actually forgot I had those. Oh, that's the uh, horizontal version. It's not the, the vertical one. And then also I sent my Otani um, Atomic Refractor to CSG. Um, those were cards that I picked up at a card show. So next up, so actually I did include uh, one of my orders. So this order is actually getting consigned right now. I'm going to skip over it. This is an SGC order. Um, all these cards are actually ending Monday and Tuesday of this upcoming uh, week. Um, so feel free to check those out. Next is a Beckett order. This is my one Beckett order. So I had one Beckett order that I did the PSA to Beckett crossover on. This Beckett order is a, a smaller order that hopefully is going to do a lot better. Um, two Zion Revolution autographed on-card rookies, Top Scrum Sapphire, Erling Holland, Mike Trout Heritage Red Auto, um, a Shohei Otani Top's Finest Gold Refractor autograph. I got a steal on this card, $566 on this card. You know, PSA 10 of that card is probably around 3,500, 4,000. So Beckett 9.5, maybe around 2,500 to 3,000. We'll see. Uh, this Bowman Chrome Kevin Durant, um, I, it is beautiful. I will be shocked if it is not a 9.5. And then also this limited Steph Curry has a very, very, um, which is Steph Curry autograph rookie, it has a very good shot at getting a gym mint grade. So I'm ha I have high expectations for this Beckett order, even though it's very, very small. Then next up, you all just saw the video for this. Um, this is an SGC order that uh, I just got back and I shipped out for consignment. Um, so 52 card order, I won't go through this. You can check out the video um, for that. And then next up, these are cards that I'm gonna be sending to SGC probably for the last time. This is gonna be likely my last SGC order. Lots of high-end stuff. The overall valuation of this order is around $3,500 or $35,000. Acquisition cost is around 25000 You can see it's got a lot of Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow type stuff, um, Steph Curry rookies, lots of autographs from Joe Burrow. <laughs> lots of autographs. Um, or sorry, Justin Herbert, both. Um, so lots of uh, really modern football type cards, uh, but then also some older Steph Curry rookies, some LaMelo balls. Um, I wanted to get some of those and see how they do in SGC slabs. I think the 10s do well. Anything outside of a 10 is starting to not do well. Um, some Topps Finest Shohei's. You can still get Finest Shohei rookies really, really cheap. Um, a couple of Kevin Durant rookies, as you can see. Uh, and then what else do we have here that is noteworthy? Wander Franco's, um, more Shohei's, couple of Luca rookies, um, Kobe rookies, Tim Duncan tops Chrome. Uh, again, a lot of this is going to really depend on what these cards kind of look like whenever I get them back, but that's what that looks like. And then last but not least, these are cards that I'm hanging on to to send to PSA from whenever they reopen because they're just, I don't think they're going to do well in a, any other holder and they're, or they're just not worth sending in. Um, or the premium in a PSA holder just makes absolute sense. There's no premium in the other holders, but there is a premium in the PSA holder. That's basically the point of this list. So 
Uh, early Topps Chrome, Kobe Bryant. These 1999s are very tough grades, and I actually think that these two are going to grade out fairly well. Early pristine Kobe's, some Patrick Mahomes second year stuff, um, CJ McCollum, uh, some select Topps or uh, Tom Brady. Gosh, I can't talk. <laughs> That have been going through like way too many cards. Some early prisms between Tim Duncan and also uh, Dirk Nowitzki. They actually picked up at a, a card show. No, I don't want to do that. Um, some Patrick Mahomes classics rookies. These all look great and I did not want to send them to a, an inferior uh, grading company. A um, couple more second year tops chrome. Kevin Durant's, uh, rookie Kevin Durant's. And then also uh, some LeBron James and Russell Wilson um, cards that I got from a all from a lot together, some some rookies and, and base cards. So guys, um, that is basically what I have sitting at all the different grading companies right now. And I'm very, very, very anxious, as you can imagine, to get these back. Um, overall, this is probably the most money that I've spent to yield such a low return. And this, this return right here, 47%, one, it's lower than 2020. It's lower than 2019, but it also doesn't take into consideration the cards that I've actually already sold. And those cards I've sold have not done well at all. They have not done well. The Beckett, the PSA Super Express and Beckett order did terrible. Um, the SGC order did bad too. So overall, I think that this period of January to June, well, May, you could basically say May, because I think June, we're starting to near the bottom. But any cards that are bought in January to May, this is probably the worst period that I've had in terms of buying and reselling since uh, really 2018. There was a period in 2018 where I did fairly bad, but right now 2021 is trending worse than 2018 in terms of what my overall projected ROI is. Now, I'm hoping that we do hit a bottom here soon and um, prices end up going back up, but it is, um, it's kind of scary out there right now. Like, there... If you're over leveraged, and I think if you bought a lot of the wrong things, um, especially some of these cards that have been really pumped on social media by all the different influencers, you could be really, really, really underwater right now. But where I'm at, I'm actually very confident. You know, I'm giving these graders $40,000 in a matter of a couple of months. Um, and I've spent over $200,000 on cards. My receivables, I think, are still going to be pretty consistent. And I have some wiggle room right here. I don't think the market is completely going to bottom out by the time I get these cards back. Um, I don't think it's going to bottom out, period. You know, I think that it's going to be at a very sustainable level of where it was, um, you know, at some point last year. And that, that's a topic for another video at a different day. But overall, I'm very confident with where everything is right now. If there's price fluctuations that uh, make some of these cards go up and down, so be it. But uh, overall, I think that I'm in a pretty good spot. Certainly wanted to share this video with you guys. I know it's a very long video. Uh, I know that um, I haven't put out a lot of content lately, and a lot of these cards did not make it onto the channel. Um, again, I wanted to get them sent out as quickly as I can whenever um, all these price increases were occurring. So um, let me know what you guys think down below. Um, are you, any of you all in a similar boat? Um, and uh, what else is it that you all think that uh, is, is good to grade right now? Because right now, kind of scratching my head. I'm doing all sorts of different strategies, but I think we're more in a wait and see period right now as opposed to jumping in and, and buying, uh, which is really what I've been doing over the past couple of months is I've, I've not been buying nearly as much as I have previously. And again, that's a topic for another day. But let me know what you guys think down below. <clears throat> Hopefully you guys like the video and we will see you next time.